This week we're looking at some videos of people lying or telling the truth. I asked you to look at these videos earlier, and so today we're gonna learn which ones were the lies and which ones were the truth. There are three things I want you to remember about these videos. First of all, they're actors, which means that they're probably already good liars. Acting ability is one of the things I think helps you to be a better liar because you're good at improvisation and you're also good at pretending to believe things that you don't really believe. The second thing you should remember about these videos is that they're all sanctioned lies, which means I told these people to lie and they are lying without really feeling guilt or consequences because of their lie. But they're all unscripted. They didn't know what the questions were in advance and so they're very naturalistic. The third thing to remember about these liars is that they're really not interrogations, they're more like conversations. And so they might not show all of the things that a person in an interrogation would really show. So let's look at one of our videos. This is Zach, and he's being asked a series of questions about himself. Zach, it's really great to have you here today. I'm glad you could join us. We're gonna go ahead and just have a very casual conversation. We're just gonna ask you an assortment of questions and just have you respond. Um, so first off, we're just going to jump right in. What is the worst job you... One thing I want you to notice is that for all the liars, there's really not very much hand movement at all. One of the things that we're learning this week is that nonverbal cues are really muted in liars. They don't gesture very much. They don't fidget and look nervous like you would think a liar would. In fact, they go into what we call freeze mode, where they hold their hands together, or they put their hands in their pockets, or they try their best not to gesture. So you can see this several times when the camera pans out, as you can see his hands are almost always in that grip. He's not gesturing very much at all. I've ever had and why'd you just like it? Um, the worst job that I've ever had was working at a pizza hut because I had to deliver really late at night and I didn't get a lot of sleep. Notice how much eye contact that he makes. He's looking straight at the interviewer almost the whole time. There's a common misperception about liars, which is that they look away or they look up or they're trying to avoid eye contact because they feel guilt. But all of these liars make a lot of eye contact, probably even more than when they're telling the truth. You know, tired. You just didn't have the hours for it? I just didn't have the mindset to deliver pizzas for too long. Mm -hmm. And about what age were you? I was 17. Okay, perfect. So you're pretty young, just a little pretty young. Pretty One of my first jobs. Great, great, great. Okay, um, next question. What would you do if your boss gave you credit for someone else's work? If my boss gave me credit for someone else's work, I might just let it be. I mean, if I'm getting credit for someone else's work. Again, he's not giving off very much at all. In fact, he's really um, trying hard not to give anything off. He's being very still. He's not gesturing very much. He doesn't look around all that much. You might notice, we'll see if we can fast forward to the place where he's um, looking around. I'm not saying it's most morale thing to do, or it's moral, but um, yeah, maybe I, would, maybe I would take the credit. Okay. Um, okay, now this is a challenging one. Um, just to listen carefully. Please tell me everything you did today working backwards from when you arrived here to the moment you woke up. Working backwards. Yes. Okay, you see there he looks up at the ceiling. And you might think that that's a cue of deception because he's looking around, he's not sure. But if you watch his video telling the truth too, he does the same thing. The reverse order question where he get, gets asked to do something temporarily but in reverse order, that's a very cognitively demanding question. And so it's difficult even when people are telling the truth. So you're gonna see signs of cognitive load like looking up and looking around and avoiding eye contact even when people are telling the truth if you ask them something cognitively difficult. Again, there's not very much non-verbally going on here. Okay, this is the second person that we interviewed. Her name's Casey, and you can tell that she's a little bit nervous as she's doing this because she laughs a lot. Nervous laughter can be a sign of deception or it might just be a sign of nervousness. But in this case, we're gonna compare her truth video to her lie video, and you can see the difference in how much laughter that she does. What would you do if your boss gave you credit for someone else's work? Uh, I take it. Okay, very <laughs> straight shooting. 
That big laugh that she does is probably more a sign of nervousness, even though she actually is lying about what she's saying. Let's compare that to what she looks like when she's telling the truth. Uh, what would you do if your boss gave you credit for someone else's work? I would say that it wasn't my work. Okay. Perfect, thank you. Uh, please. No big laugh, no big smiles. She's just answering the question normally. Whereas you can see, as we saw a moment ago, when she was lying, then she had the big laugh because it's like she doesn't even believe her own answer. And she knows that what she said was kind of unbelievable. So listen how she answers the, if your boss gave you credit for someone else's work question. What would you do if your boss gave you credit for someone else's work? Uh... That's what we call a filled pause. Filled pause means she's thinking, she doesn't want to make it look like she doesn't have anything to say, but she doesn't know what she wants to say yet, and so she fills that pause with some sort of sound. In this case, it's the long uh that she makes. Deceivers tend to make more of those filled pauses in terms of their vocalizations than people who are telling the truth. Uh, you'll see a similar case when we look at the verbal cues, where a lot of the liars are repeating the question back We'll talk about that more when we talk about the verbal cues. But filled pauses are one of the nonverbal cues that can give you a sign that somebody's uh, not telling the truth. Okay, this is liar number three. So he's also being asked the same questions, and he does a couple of different things that I want to point out to you that might be an indication that he's lying. Actually, this one was interesting because most of the other videos uh, you guys when I pulled you about these videos, we're about 50-50. You weren't too sure if they were lying or telling the truth. But this one, 73% of you said he was lying. So he was easy to peg. Let's figure out why. Good afternoon. How you doing, man? Dwayne, is it? Yes. I'm oh, glad to have you with us. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and ask you a quick couple of questions. And we're just going to jump around. Just okay. answer very casual, very informal. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just jump right into it, okay? All right. What is the worst job you have ever had and why did you dislike it? Working at Pizza Hut because I absolutely despise pizzas. It does that little um, tongue in the cheek thing, which maybe is an indication of, of deception. He just said something that he despises pizza. He knows that's not true and it seemed kind of uncomfortable for him to say that. Um, tell me everything you did today working backwards from this moment right now to when you woke up. Okay. I, um, I walked into the building. Okay, there's another one. He's showing a lot of signs of uncertainty. I walked into the building. He's actually asking that as a question rather than just stating a fact. So he's doing the reverse order question that we talked about, which is a very difficult thing to do cognitively. But you can hear the rising intonation at the end of his statement. And also just generally higher pitch is also a sign of deception. That's difficult to pick up on if you're just listening to someone, but when you compare it to, some, to someone telling a truth, then you can hear the difference in the pitch. The higher pitch usually is a sign of deception. This is our fourth deceiver. She's very tough to pin, to pin down. In fact, most of you had a very difficult time with her. In her deception video, only 33% of you thought that she was lying. So I think she's our toughest one and a very good liar. Probably a good actor as well. Hi. You so you'll okay. notice right there that she has her hands in her lap. Again, the hands never move. She makes a lot of eye contact. She smiles. She's friendly. She really doesn't do anything that would give her away. Ever had, and why did you dislike it? Um, I was an ice cream scooper. She didn't repeat the question. She didn't really look around. She didn't have to think too hard. She gave her answer quickly. Makes her sound confident that she knows what she's talking about, even though she's lying. This is liar number five, Marco. Marco sits almost the entire time with his hands on his lap like that. He doesn't move, he doesn't gesture, just like many you saw in many of the other liars. He's also a pretty good liar. Um, about 42% of you correctly guessed that he was lying in the lie video. Good afternoon, Marco. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Um, we're just going to go ahead and have a very casual interview. Um, go ahead and answer as you will, very um, informal. And we're going to go ahead and just jump right in, yeah? Yeah, right. All right. What is the worst job you've ever had and why did you dislike it? 
God, okay. I worked as an uh, assistant for a mechanic, a friend of mine, and uh, well, like, he started working with us on a car I have. My dad found him. He worked on my Mustang with me. So again, you can see a lot of eye contact. You can see he's looking straight at the interviewer. He's very casual and relaxed. Doesn't show a lot of signs of tension. And so he's another one that's going to be very difficult to pick up. I think a common theme that you'll see through these videos is that they're very difficult to detect just from the nonverbal cues alone. In fact, the accuracy ratings that you gave show that these people were very hard to pick out when they were lying and when they were telling the truth. The accuracy ratings are about 50-50, and so that is pretty much what you would expect. So try not to focus too much on the nonverbal cues. Instead, focus on more diagnostic cues, which we'll learn about next week.